What's up everyone, it's Jack and Juan here from Plain Gains, and today we're going to be talking about sarcomerogenesis, which is a topic that's been talked a lot about in the fitness industry. We're going to give some basic information and talk about the mechanisms behind it. So first we're going to talk about what sarcomeres are, then we're going to explain what sarcomerogenesis is, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail about sarcomeres and how they can grow. So first, sarcomeres are the smallest contractile unit in the muscles. A group of sarcomeres together form a myofibril. Eventually, these continue to grow and grow and grow and go up in scale by adding more and more, and that eventually goes to muscle fascicles. Here, we define the tension as the force that's contained within the sarcomere or the muscle. And sarcomeres are made up of myosin and actin, you can see the thick filament, which is the red kind of thick area in the middle, and the actin, which is the blue um, DNA-looking filaments on the exterior. They combine, combine together, which allows the sarcomere to shorten and lengthen, which is basically just shortening of the A-band, which you can see in the graphic in the bottom. And finally, there are some passive elements contained inside of sarcomeres, like Titan, which you can see this is represented by this yellow spring on the graphic to the right. So what is sarcomerogenesis? Well, the word ogenesis generally means like the creation of. So sarcomerogenesis just means the synthesis or creation of new sarcomeres. It can occur primarily in skeletal and cardiac muscles, though we haven't really observed it in humans and it can be affected at multiple different levels of gene expression, whether that's transcriptional, translational, or post-translational. All right, so sarcomeres can seem to grow with two different mechanisms. We have sarcomeres in parallel and sarcomeres in series. So starting off with sarcomeres in parallel, here sarcomeres are being added in columns that are parallel to each other, right? So what this does is that they're basically stacking on one another. So we have a point from A to B. This doesn't necessarily change the length, but it rather just increases the width and diameter of the muscle fiber. And this, in a way, can actually increase the force output and the resulting torque generation because muscle torque is dependent on muscle geometry. To explain a little more on that, there is muscles have this thing called a cross-sectional area, which is filled in with sarcomeres. Are packed up with sarcomeres. When we add more sarcomeres in that cross-sectional area, it allows a greater capacity of force generation for the muscle. So we're doing with sarcomeres in parallel, we're not changing the distance of the muscle fiber, but rather we're just increasing it in diameter, and then that's going to allow us to pack more sarcomeres into that cross-sectional area, which is actually going to increase the force generation capacity. So in this case, the change in length is rather going to remain constant because again, we're not changing point A to point B. So there's a little equation here and all that triangle means, the delta triangle, it just means a change in something. So all this is showing is that the change in length of sarcomere one is going to equal to the change in length of sarcomere two. And that's going to equal to the change in length of the total muscle, which is true. You know, we're not changing the length of the muscle. So you know, the, if one sarcomere changes, it's gonna be the same as the other sarcomere changes. And this is actually going to create a con, which though we can generate more force, the shortening velocity is actually going to be slower. And I'll go over that more when we talk about sarcomeres in series. Now, there is an equation at the bottom uh, showing uh, force, right, because of the force capacity. So all this is saying is that the force of sarcomere 1 is going to be added with the force of sarcomere 2. And that's going to equal to the total muscle's capacity to generate force. Because think of it this way, the peak force um, is two times that of parallel arrangement than as compared to series. So moving on to sarcomeres in series. When we talk about sarcomeres in series, sarcomeres are added on the same axis. What does that mean? Well, think of it as you have a train and the train uh, is connected with different cars behind it. The entire train is the muscle fiber, and the cars connected to it are the sarcomeres, right? So if we keep adding cars to the train, we're making the train longer, and therefore sarcomeres in series are then going to create 
classical changes. So it is going to contribute to classical length, and it is going to uh, make the distance from point A to point B longer in the muscle fiber. Now, the changes in length here are going to increase, so the equation is just going to be a tad different just by adding um, a summation. So we have the change in length of sarcomere 1 is going to be added with the change in length of sarcomere 2, because sarcomeres are being added in this chain-like structure tied up end to end, right? And then this is going to contribute to the entire length of the muscle, right? The muscle's total length change. Now, because it has a greater uh, change in length or a greater range of motion in length, uh, this is actually going to allow for a higher velocity contraction. Now, it may not make a lot of sense because if you're like, well, if something has to travel more, how, why, why would it be faster with contraction? Right, if a muscle of a sarcomere is longer versus if one is shorter. Well, we have an equation showing this as well. And if we were to take the change in length of a parallel sarcomere and the change in length of a sarcomere in series, or the, the muscle fibers with sarcomeres in parallel and sarcomeres in series, and if we were to take uh, the change in time and divide that by the same time interval, because velocity is just the change in length over the same time interval we are going to notice that the peak contraction velocities are going to be much higher for that of sarcomeres in series than in parallel, because the one in series is going to have a larger numerator on top of the fraction because we have the change in time or the change in length over the change in time. This creates a fraction. We're going to have a larger numerator um, over the same time interval, which is just going to be we're dividing both changes in length by the same number, and that's going to you know, allow us to get a greater number as a result or a greater quotient. Quotient. So the shorting capacity is then going to increase. Now, what the equation here shows is very similar to the force equation, um, but again, the only difference is that we flip the summation sum symbol to more uh, to to the equal symbol. So we have the force in sarcomere one is going to equal to the force in sarcomere two. And that is going to equal to the entire force of the muscle. So force capacity isn't necessarily changing here. Uh, rather, the higher velocity contraction is changing because the length of the muscle is changing. The force relatively stays somewhat equal because all these sarcomeres, because they're tied up end-to-end, -end, they can transmit equal force across, and that could be measured at the end of the myofibril. So... That is pretty much it on the topic of sarcomyogenesis. Um, I hope we are able to give you a quick and deeper understanding of this mechanism. Uh, and as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and you can follow us on Instagram at Coach Juan Samu and at Deltoid Factory. And you can always leave any questions in the comment below. Thank you.